right, questions for Coach? Coach, this is Jared McDonald with the Daily News. You know this is a Mercer team that plays good defense. They're aggressive. Um, you know, they force you guys in 25 turnovers, um, shoot just 33%, really disruptive in there. Um, you know, what is it about them that makes them, made them so tough here tonight? Well, they're more athletic than we are. They're longer, uh, they're explosive, and they're more experienced. You know, they had three seniors and two juniors uh, starting, well, most of the time playing. And so uh, uh, that really, and we're our own worst enemy. A lot of those turnovers, uh, you can give some credit to Mercer's defense, but some of those are just careless, us dropping balls or making careless reversal passes and not looking where we're throwing the ball, just throwing over there thinking somebody's not going to jump in that passing lane and, and get a deflection. So, and, and, and yeah, credit goes to Mercer that they, got, they forced us into 25 turnovers. Turnovers, but we're averaging 20 plus turnovers, and so it's not just Mercer; uh, it's more us that uh, than anything. And so until we, and that's what we talked about in the game, that until we do a better job of taking care of that ball and moving it, uh, and catching it, and squaring up to the basket, and making sure we're seeing the best play, uh, we're going to have a hard time scoring, and we're going to have a hard time beating teams. Uh, we can't have 20 plus turnovers uh, every night, and so we've got to take care of that. Coach, this is uh, Nick Kieser from the Contract here. Hopefully I have better internet now. But I was going to ask, so uh, are you feeling good about your team's performance after tonight's game? I know that you guys lost, but, you know, are you feeling better about how you guys – as far as that rhythm goes? In stretches, I felt positive about it. Uh, I don't feel like it was a 17-point difference. The final difference in the ball game, I felt, was a little bit different than the game was played. But but it is what it is. And uh, I, I felt like overall they kept fighting. Uh, every time we were in a huddle, every time we were in a timeout, uh, they kept, you know, we got this, keep fighting. And there was one timeout, we were down 10, we needed a score and a stop and a score. We got a score, didn't get a stop. And uh, so that, that comes back. And even that last possession where they had multiple offensive rebounds, uh, that's something that, that keeps nagging us. Uh, we, we need some more offense. Uh, you know, we, we got some young kids putting shots up out there, and we're just not not making those shots. And so we tried. I thought in the second quarter we did a pretty good job of getting the ball inside. Uh, that led to some free throw attempts. We got some fouls. Uh, we, we're not doing a good job of getting that ball inside and, and making sure we're getting easier shots, whether we're throwing it in there and, and fumbling the ball or whether we're not throwing it in at the right time. Uh, that's what we've got to improve. Uh, you know, overall, uh, we're getting better better. It doesn't show, uh, but we're getting better. We've got to get to where we can uh, find some consistent scoring. Uh, I know Hope had a hard time tonight. Ali Collette had a hard time getting some shots to fall. I think Mariah took a few shots. We just not getting a high enough percentage uh, uh, from the field. Well, this is Jeff Larcher from WBKO. Just with the problems that you think you have with your team, do you think that's just from experience, just lack of experience? Do you think these are things that are correctable just with more games played? Or do you think there's like some some rotation changes that need to be made? Well, I think we made the rotation changes with, uh, you know, moving Hope to the point guard. I think she kind of gets the ball up and down the floor uh, the best. She sees the floor well. We're just turning the ball over. We didn't, uh, even when Mariah was uh, at that position, we still had a high number of turnovers. And it wasn't all coming from her, but it's a team problem. We're, we're, we're not catching balls. Hope's making some passes. Uh, you know, Raneem might catch that ball. Ivy Brown might catch that ball and finish it. Ch Chastity Gooch might catch that ball and make a play and score. Uh, we got the ball inside uh, to Merrill several times against the zone, and we didn't get a layup out of that thing. We, you know, so you know, Kendall Noble would have turned and made a basket right there. And so right now we're uh, we're not finishing some of those plays that we need to finish. I think uh, uh, we can we can play a bigger lineup. I'm not sure that that fixes our our, our turnover problem. I think that might uh, make it a little. Bit, that's why we have got a few more guards on the floor. I think a lot of it is experience, just kind of settling down, seeing the floor, uh, making the safe pass, not the great pass. I think. I uh, think a lot of times we're trying to make the assist instead of making like the hockey assist. Make the easy pass that leads to the next easy pass that leads to a score, whether it's your shot or your teammate's shot. We're seeing that, that assist and we're trying to sneak that ball in there. And that's the same thing we do in practice. And so we stop, even a shoot around today, had to stop and, and go through all the, the turnovers that we had. Uh, and then we, we have to stop that. We've got to look for the easy pass and share the ball until we get an easy shot. Okay, just to follow up on that really quick, uh, we talked to Hope, I don't know if you were able to hear or you in the room, but she, she, she's still upbeat, right? Like she, mm -hmm. she told you guys are losing some of the games, she says, swimming through the fog, you know, we're going to get to this, it just takes the experience. How are you able to keep your team around that way, to feel that way, even though you might be dropping a few games here and there? I feed them ice cream every time I can. <laughs> 
So actually, we, we talk about that, how difficult this is, and they're learning. And this is, a, we, you know, even before the Bellarmine game, uh, when I dropped my son off at, uh, at, at school, we had on the, the sign that uh, you got to embrace the storms of life because nothing grows without the rain. And so we talked about that, that difficult times make you better. And I talked to Hope even a few weeks ago that she felt like every time she guarded somebody, it was a foul. Every time she passed the ball, it was a turnover. Every time she shot the ball, it was a miss. And I said, you know what? You're in a good spot because that means you're learning. You're going to get better. And as soon as you get through this, you're going to be a really good basketball player. And so, but I said, I also can't promise you that it's going to be better tomorrow. It might take a game. It might take four games. It might take 10 games. I don't know when, but everybody kind of gets through those learning uh, moments at different times. And so this team uh, is resilient. Uh, they were po they're positive in practice. They work hard. Uh, they want to be successful. And I think that I have every reason to believe that they will be. Uh, we just got to have a little bit more success on the floor so we get some confidence and know how to do things the right way. Compared with the daily news, I think for two years now that I've been working with you and the team, you know, every game you said we need to be better rebounding. Hmm. Um, you finish plus eight on the boards tonight against the team that you said was more athletic than you guys. Um, I know you touched on the offensive rebounds a little bit with them having 11. But overall, how do you feel like you guys did on the glass? I feel like tonight it improved. I feel like it got better. Now, we were still at about, I think I roughly figured out it was about 68% on the defensive boards. Uh, and I know there was a possession, a couple possessions towards the end of the game where they had more than one offensive rebound. So that might have been a plus uh, on, the, on the good side of 70%, which is our target. And, uh, you know, good teams will even get above 70% on the defensive boards. So uh, I know I can see their, their focus in practice. Uh, I can also see that when the fatigue happens, that the focus wanes. And so that we have to do a better job of, uh, well, even in the Bellarmine game, we had some, some players got tired. And I sent word out there and said, you're not coming out. You're tired. You learn how to play tough while you're tired. And so uh, we, that's still a growing and learning process as well, is learning, learning how to play when you've played 30 minutes and, and the other game's on the line and you've got to still finish strong. And so uh, as, as we got tired towards that late part of the fourth quarter, we didn't box out. We weren't pursuing the ball as aggressively as we did in the first, second, third quarter. And that's something that we can watch on film. That's something they can learn. And that's something we can do better on Sunday afternoon. Paired with the daily news again, kind of going off of that, learning to play through some things. You had to burn through a few times <laughs> early in the game, and I think you used your last one early in the third quarter. Um, obviously, you probably would like to have some as the game continues on, but, you know, is it beneficial in the long run at all, do you think, that – the young team has to learn how to play through some of those mistakes. Well, we've done that, Jerry. We, we, we've played games and have had timeouts and I've taken them to the locker room. And tonight, going into this game, knowing how, how good Mercer is, they're a really good basketball team, and I decided that I was going to try to keep us in the game with the timeouts as long as I could keep us in the game. And I didn't want to lose the game in the third quarter. I didn't want to lose the game in the second quarter. And, get, and so I was trying to keep us in the game with those timeouts and stop runs and keep the kids calm and make them help them to know what they need to do next and so I felt like that that helped us we were able to come out to timeouts get some baskets uh, get some turnovers uh, we didn't always convert those turnovers I think uh, uh, several times I saw Mariah he would get her hands on balls didn't lead to a basket and so we've got to get some of those easy transition opportunities uh, but those timeouts yeah I wish that we had you know we've had a bunch of scrimmages uh, against our uh, practice guys before we ever played a basketball game and I would tell the players I don't have 17 timeouts because in our scrimmages I would take timeouts to teach and uh, and, we're, and so tonight going into this game I had decided that whatever it took if we ran out in the second quarter I was going to run out in the second quarter but I was going to try to keep them in the game and help them to learn and then maybe we stayed in, in the game long enough that we can finish it off and so uh, uh, and, and Fatu learned a lesson tonight uh, you know we had come out of timeouts so we got no timeouts and uh, and she called one and uh, that's a mistake that, uh, uh, that we'll, we'll learn from and so uh, normally that wouldn't happen. Normally I would keep a timeout. Uh, if we had an experienced ball club, I'd make sure we had at least one timeout uh, coming in the stretch for those situations. Uh, but tonight I had already decided that we were going to use all those timeouts that we needed to stay in the game. And whenever they ran out, they ran out. But I was going to try to make sure we use all those uh, as learning opportunities and try to stay close. Well, just just like the um Hope kind of break the news to us that you guys are going to play on Sunday. Yes. Like at Tennessee Tech. Just in this weird COVID world where games get canceled, games get picked up at the last second. Just, does that affect anything that you do or are you just kind of roll with the punch? 
Well, number one, uh, I appreciate uh, Kim at Tennessee Tech, and, and they were scheduled to play, uh, I think they're scheduled to play Mercer on Monday. And uh, so as soon as I got word today, while we were right before shoot around, I got word that uh, Sanford wasn't going to be able to play. And that's just, you know, that's the way it is this time. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be stay on your toes. You can't get down. You can't get uh, deflated about things. Uh, we were looking forward to that other home game. Uh, but more importantly, these players that we have right Right now are not going to continue to get better if we don't play games and so uh, Tennessee Tech was uh, willing to play we worked it out where we can uh, uh, get in their facility and, and play on Sunday afternoon so we're gonna get in here tomorrow watch film get on that bus go down to Cookville two o'clock and uh, we're going to tip it up again and so uh, we'll, we'll see if we can do a little bit better job taking care of the ball make some shots and do a good job on the boards and maybe we'll uh, figure out a way to win a ball game anything else all right, thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Olivia.